willing to give thanks to the Lord. Amen.
uh, showcase our youth, the children, and three of our fine young people uh, went to our church summer camp, and I'm going to ask JoJo and Dallas and Dee Dee, if you don't mind, if we come right up here by the microphone, Michael, we'll make sure this is on. These fine young children represented Ridgeway at our church summer camp. Let's give them a good hand. Well, Dallas, since you're right there by the microphone, you want to tell people how you enjoyed it or what was the best part? Conditioning in their cabins, <laughs> right? <laughs> <Too cold. laughs> okay, Georgia, you want to say something about camp? I saw a wonderful photograph of these three on Facebook as they were about to go to camp. You want to say anything? Did you have a good time, sweetie? That's what counts, okay. Good. Thank you. Good. Okay, Dee Dee? Okay. Let's give him a hand. So you guys can go sit down now. You know, uh, congregation, I see uh, Willie back there, and Hank, it takes me way back when they were like that. We had a lot of kids there in Philadelphia, and some of the best time and finances we ever invested was sending children to camp. And I can remember one time, and I think it was Willie, I'm not sure, I think it was about the second or third year that he went, he finally took time to read the application, other than getting someone to sign it. And he said, this says we have to pay to go. And I said, well, every year you had to pay to go. Well, I've never paid anything. I said, no, we did as a church because it's the greatest investment that we can ever do. I look back, and it's so good to see uh, Willie and his dad and his friend there with him. And uh, I'm thinking, I run into every, some of these kids every so often, but you know what? They're like, this now, okay? And children do grow. And we are so blessed that these three precious children, young men and young women, went to our church summer camp. And now we're going to have uh, the shortest one that went to come on up, Zach. <laughs> he wasn't a camper, okay? He was a counselor. This is the first year, to my knowledge, other than my wife and I running a church summer camp, that one of our own was a counselor within our church camp. And when I heard Zach was going, I, I only asked one question, who was going to watch him? <laughs> but he's a fine young man. Zach, you'd like to testify, buddy? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, best way I can. Uh, this is my first year of staff, and my expectations were kind of high compared to what they heard me to. And then the third day, which was the baptismal service, I was asked to be the one doing it with two of my probably the greatest friends I've ever had there. And just the way it moved across all these young kids really just made, I can't exactly explain it. Words can't explain exactly how God moved throughout those children. It just really touches your heart. And I loved it. It's just knowing that if I could have had my spiritual walk the way I... I saw those little kids have theirs. I feel like I could be so much of a bigger man today than I was then. And I just loved it. And I'm thankful that I was able to be a part of it. Hold on. Be before you sit down, do either one of you two want to say anything?
Nothing. I would ask him what he wants to do when he grows up, but I think he's grown up. We've also asked our young people and uh, some of the children if they want to to come and sing a song or two. You guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> you may have to readjust the mic for some of you.
Get out of that. 
Thank you, by the way. I appreciate that. Those have been around the church any length of time. Uh, Glenners have come a long ways, haven't they? Amen. It's a far cry from this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Uh, but we appreciate our youth, their energy. Uh, Alex got confused about his left and right there for a little bit, but he, he finally got that mastered. But we appreciate the goodness of the Lord. Uh, and Michael, as we get into the message, uh, as I was typed everything up last night and was ready to go. Uh, another verse hit me, and I wasn't sure whether I was going to get into it or not. I'll probably just do the first verse on the slide and then go to this, and we'll just see where it goes from there. I appreciate the goodness of the Lord. Uh, I've learned a long time ago to allow the Lord to have control and be in control. Amen? Uh, I like that last part of that song that they were singing. You put your whole self in, and then you take your whole self out, put your whole self back in, and then you shake it all about. You give your heart to Jesus, and you turn your life around. That's what it's all about. You know, that's truly what it's all about. We appreciate our uh, children going to the back and those that will be teaching them. Uh, we are blessed with some very fine children. Uh, they are the Sometimes people say they are the church of tomorrow, but I believe they have a vital part in the church today. And once again, it was so good to uh, have one of our own uh, being a counselor at camp this year. Uh, I appreciate what the children said. that They came home and said they want to go again next year. That's good. But now they need to take their friends. This is a building program. Amen. Speak or go. The first slide is over in Acts, the 38th chapter. And Michael also need the ones in Luke right after that. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all those or all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. We talk about how it's God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. We talk about the Trinity, how there are three separate, but yet there are one. And as I came across this and I was studying, I thought, why would God have to anoint Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost? He's part of the Trinity, right? But you know, he came down in the form of a man, and He's the Son of God, but He's also the Son of Man. Brother Curtis, I believe with all my heart that if Jesus grew up to be our example, and He was still part of the Trinity, 
he couldn't be our perfect example because we wouldn't have that much authority and power. So God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Jesus went on to say in his ministry near the end, these things and greater shall ye do, because I go to my Father which is in heaven. We were talking in Sunday school class about to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven as a child. Well, one writer said that the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. That's awesome when you think about it, because the Bible bears out that John was the greatest prophet of all times. And so you think, well, how could the least be greater than the best of all the prophets? You know why? Because of what is placed from inside of us, the kingdom, John didn't have access to what you and I have. The prophets didn't have access to what you and I have. And so everywhere Jesus went, he was doing good. And Luke, now it tells us this. And a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy of whom he should do this, for he loveth our nation and hath built us a synagogue. Now you talk about someone loving those who serve him. He could have thought, well, you know, if this man happens to die, I'll just get another servant. It wasn't that kind of relationship. And the Old Testament talks about if you were sold into servitude and you served your number of years that paid off your debt, that you could be set free. But you also had a choice if you loved the master that you were serving and decided to stay there, they would take an awl, an A-W-L, like a punch, and punch the lower earlobe and they have a hole there. So these kids running around with holes in their ears, uh, they weren't the first ones, okay? Uh, they, they have a hole in their ear, and it signified they were serving their master out of love and not out of duty. And Sister Joan, I wonder sometimes spiritually how God looks on us. Does he see the hole in our ear? I serve God just not to escape a devil's hell, although that is a reality. That's one of the benefits of being a Christian. But I serve him because he first loved me. Amen? So these, the centurion sent some of his other servants to get a hold of Jesus. Next slide now tells us, then Jesus went with them. So he was going, okay? And when he was now not far from the house, in other words, he was getting very close to where this servant was sick, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. In other words, I didn't feel I was worthy enough to come and ask you personally. I sent some of my servants. Now I'm sending you some of my friends, not my servants. You know what Jesus said to his disciples? You're not my servants. But you're my friends. You know why? Because servants don't understand or know what the master is going to do, but friends do. So now the centurion sent some friends. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. The title of my message was, Speak or Go. Jesus was going because he was asked. Now he's almost there, and the friends of the centurion say, just speak the word. Next slide, Michael. For I am also a man set under authority, having unto me soldiers. And I say to one, go, and he goeth. To another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned him about, and said to the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant not healed. 
See, sometimes we misread some of these things. Whole, that had been sick. He didn't feel better. He was better. Whatever that element was, I want you to think about that. It, it, it could have been cancer. And you know what? Jesus, on the way, stopped because there was a man who had authority who said, I know what authority is. And Lord, you're the one that has the ultimate authority. And he spoke. And the people that were sent returned and found that servant whole. Jesus sometimes in the Bible would tell us that he touched people and they were healed and when they returned and glorified him they were made whole. How many times has God done something to you or I and blessed us abundantly and we have failed to give him the praise? You know, every day can be an adventure in Christ. I looked at these campers that we sent and I thought, Lord, thank you that they want to go back another year. Amen? I was proud of the one that we sent, especially since it was my, my grandson that went as a counselor. And, and I thought, Lord, help us to establish these children, these grown men and women. I looked at the older youth up here trying to help. And I said, well, they didn't have this and they didn't do that. They were obedient and they were willing. You know, if there be first a willing heart, that's what God wants here today. Now, Michael doesn't have the rest of these on the slide because this is what crossed my mind. And this is over in 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. And I'm going to go down to uh, about verse 25 and just read a couple of verses of that in the first two verses in, of chapter 7. But before I get into this, how many here need something from the Lord this morning? Can I see your hands? I don't, care, I don't care what it is. It can be physical. It can be financial. It can be emotional. Any aspect of your life. And the devil will make you think there is no way in the world that you are going to be able to conquer this. But the word says we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen? We are victorious. We pray for things, and the Lord knows already the thoughts and the intents of my heart. He knows exactly what I need and you need here this morning. But I'm going to read a passage in the Old Testament. If you want to know desperate times, this is desperate times. Verse 25. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it, until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver, eighty pieces of silver, to buy a donkey's head, so you have something to eat. Now, any way you put it, you can say, well, they barbecued it, or they put it in a great big pot, and they boiled it and made soup. I, I don't care, it's still a donkey's head. Okay? It gets worse. Listen to this. And a fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. They would take waste products from a, a dove, sell it so people could make soup and have something to eat because there would be protein in it. Now, is that desperate times? That's desperate times. Looking forward to lunch today, aren't you, moms? We, we are having a time where the devil makes things look so much worse than what they really are. You know that he will make a mountain out of a molehill? He will make you feel that you are at wit's end and there is no possible way that you can be blessed? And the king said unto her, now it gets, it gets worse. I'm coming down to verse... 28. And the king said unto her, What endeth thee? And she answered, This woman said unto us, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son. Did you hear that? She took her baby, 
and put it in a pot and boiled her son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she hid her son. You know, you may think you have friends on the outside. Uh, the prodigal son had a lot of friends until his money ran out. And then he was left high and dry. Think of this. They were eating donkey's heads, pigs and dung, but it got worse. They actually took a baby, you know, I think a little Delilah. Can, I can't imagine taking a baby, put into a pot, boil it. That's horrible enough, but we did eat him. And the next day, they tried to get the other baby, and she hid. Well, when the man in charge heard this, he became wroth and said that I'm going to have the, I'm sort of paraphrasing these other verses, I'm going to have the head of Elisha. But the Spirit of the Lord fell upon Elisha. When God speaks, there is a divine supply chain or a pipe that is opened up and he meets and supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Chapter 7, verse 1 says, Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. In other words, this isn't me speaking. This is what the Lord is telling me to say to you. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. The very place where you're eating donkey's heads, pigeon dung, and actually eating your babies. This About this time tomorrow, the darkest hour is just before the dawn. When the devil thinks you, this you are oppressed and think there is no way out, let the word of the Lord touch your heart. We need to be washed in the word. The washing of the water by the word. Then the Lord, who had heard the king, who, whose hand the king leaned upon, or answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. A man who had the king's ear, so to speak, when he heard what Elisha said, he said, if, if God were to make windows in heaven, and this happened to open them out and pour them out, how could this thing be? But Elisha knew who had spoken to him. He said, you're going to see it, but you're not going to be able to partake of it. You know the rest of the story, if you know your Bible, there were some leopards that were starving to death just like everybody else. And they looked at each other and said, well, we can die here or die out there. Why don't we go to the camp of the enemy and present ourselves? Worst case scenario, they'll kill us. We're dying anyways. Best case scenario, they might give us something to eat. That wasn't the best case scenario, Brother Hank. God was going to use people, listen now, who were unclean. You know the strangers are going to build the walls of Jerusalem? I'm longing for the day and time that we not only find the favor of God, but the favor of God reaches out and touches people who will bless. You know that the Bible talks about the wealth of the world is laid up for the Gentiles, for his people, I mean. God, God can do great things, but we have to get to a place where God can bless us and we will allow him to bless. They go down there, and before they got there, God moved. They heard a great noise, and the enemy ran. They were so scared. I mean, they were so frightened. They ran for all they were worth and left everything behind. Think of that. You know, sometimes we like to pray, praying some one another. The other night, my grandson Sammy and his girl that he's seen were playing pool in my garage there. And they were just talking, having a good time. I had to go up in my truck and get something, and something got a hold of me, and it probably wasn't the Lord. I went to that door, and with all my might, I pounded on that door. And they began to scream like you couldn't believe. Why? Because they thought it was peace and quiet and having a good time. And all of a sudden, this horrible noise. 
And all of us who were adults in the house, Mr. Stump, we laughed at them. We were so compassionate. We just laughed and laughed, and they just scared to death. But see, there'll come a day in time. You reap, the Bible says you reap what you sow. So I'm walking on eggshells right now. But these leopards did what they thought they had to do. And, be, and as they began to eat, you know what they said? What we do is not right. We may be unclean, but lo and behold, there's people back here that we know that are starving. And when they went back, you know there were some people that thought it was a trap? The Lord speaks to his sheep, and the Bible tells me his sheep know his voice. Who's speaking to you right now? Do you feel like you're at your wit's end? Brother Curtis, if you'll come to the piano. Do you feel like there is no hope? The God that I serve is more than able to meet and supply. If he speaks, it's settled. Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father. He's my advocate. He, he's my go-between. And all I have to do, Sister Betty, is get him to turn to his Father and make it so. That's simple, isn't it? Don't you worry about the enemy? Don't you worry about all the things that are being said, all the things that are being done? The God that I serve is more than able to meet and supply your need as we stand. Different ones. You've held up your hands. Some of you maybe just held up your hands in your heart and said, I have a pressing need. God will move heaven and earth to make his word steadfast and sure. We serve a God that can speak and make it so. I've been in situations, I've been in some financial situations, I began to sell almost everything that wasn't nailed down to pay off some debt. And you know what? God just moved and it was all canceled. I didn't file bankruptcy. God just took care of it. That's the kind of God we serve. Sister Gail, I, I'm in awe. I look over my life and sometimes you say, well, you sacrificed and did that? In the midst of all that we went through, I never felt I was sacrificing because I was blessed of God. Blessed of God. Do you feel his blessings here today? God is still in the miracle answering business. We are praying for some people. Sister Gail has mentioned some family members over and over and over. God hears those prayers. You know what? Just like that, God can answer every one of them. We have prayed for Christina. You know what? He is still in the miracle answering business. I've visited with her, prayed with her, and she has made a statement recently, either way, I win. Does that mean she's given up? No. There's a man of God in the Bible that says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. God did not slay him, but God blessed Job where he had twice as much as he had before. She has cheated death at least twice that I know of. Excuse me. God has blessed her while she walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Evil did not happen. See, God knows what you need. And just as these... Uh, you see some of these smiles up here in these kids? I thought, man, those smiles are contagious. You can't look at some of them when they smile and you not smile back. It, it, it grabs you, doesn't it? Well, that's how the Spirit of Jesus needs to be here this morning. Is he touching you? Do you feel me wanting to bless? Brother Curtis, if you have one that we can sing, if we are here today and you have a need, turn your heart to Jesus. Put your whole self in. Pull your whole self out. Put your whole self in. Shake it all about. Give your heart to Jesus and turn your life around. That's what it's all about. Heavenly Father, as we approach your throne.